This is an Arduino Uno. I'm sure most of you have seen one before. And this is the genuine article. It has various markings on it. Uh, there, it's a high quality silk screen. It says made in Italy, just behind there. It comes with this sticker on the chip there, on the 328P. And on the back, again, that high quality silk screen. This is an R3 model from arduino.org one of the official sites and it's a nice unit and it's well made um, one of the nice things about the genuine article is that you get the pins marked there on the outside of the headers which is quite useful when you're trying to plug things in however there are loads of clones on the market and I've certainly bought a few of them and I'd like to show you through a few of the features that come with some of those cloned Arduinos. I think this was one of my first clones, certainly I think it was the first one I bought. And as you can see, it looks very similar, apart from this major difference, because this used the surface mount um, 328. Um, but as you can see, it's very similar, obviously it's set out in exactly the same pin formation, so that you can plug standard uh, boards into here and the standard place for the ISCP but this one has uh, male pins on the headers as well as female and that's really useful when you're trying to plug wires into this you don't get the silk screen on the side of the headers and um, there's nothing on the back the only other thing that's different about this one is you do get these extra pins here for extra 5 volts and grounds and 3.3s, SCL and SDA, those sorts of things. Although it didn't come with those pins populated, this one looks very similar to the last one, apart from um, the male header pins haven't been populated and I haven't put any in, and this one comes with micro USB instead of the standard. USB, the old sort of printer style size USB. Those extra headers here as before. But one other thing you might notice, there are two voltage regulators on here. And I didn't realise when I first bought this, but one of those regulators, I think it's this one, is a 5 volt. No, putting it in the light, sorry. This is the 5 volt regulator to power the board. And this one is a 3.3 regulator. Now most Arduino Unos get their 3.3 volts from the FTDI, or in this case, the CH340, and it can only supply a very, very small amount of current at 3.3 volts. This one uses the AMS1117 3.3, and I think that can supply up to an amp on that little 3.3 volt pin. This is the most recent clone Arduino Uno I've bought, and I guess in some ways it reflects the original uh, most. Uh, it uses the uh, 328P here that's removable, 28-pin uh, chip, so you can swap it out. Um, however, this also has the ICSP and the USB ASP headers to program it as well, US BASP as some people call it. Male and female headers on the I.O. pins, which is really useful. Standard USB. Um, but it also has these two extra keys. It's as if they had a bit of space on the board and what can you do with it. So there are two push buttons you can use and they come out on these pins and you'd connect them to the I.O. pins. This one does try and look almost original, which is a bit naughty but uh, it's quite a useful board. Of course, the feature that I didn't explain on the original Arduino is the fact that you are supporting the foundation, you are supporting the development of this product, you are supporting the development of the IDE. But another nice thing to have is you get the, the box. I guess that's upside down. There you go, you get the box, and inside the box you get some rubber feet, to put on the bottom of the Arduino, you get some stickers and you get a little leaflet saying thank you for supporting Arduino. 
And you don't get any of that with any of the clones. And if you're that way inclined, of course, you can build your own on a breadboard or put it into your project. These are designed for developing your project. And then you might put one of these 80 Mega 328Ps inside your project. Give it 5 volts, 16 mil, 16 Meg, sorry, crystal. Some uh, capacitors, these are 28 picofarads, you know, um, LEDs and a couple of resistors. And you've got yourself a working system. Of course, most people suggest to start with the Uno, but I'm not sure I entirely agree. I prefer the Nano in these breakout boards because they give you loads of points to plug in 5 volts and ground, plus all your sensor pins, extra points to plug in 3.3 volts and ground. Um, I think this is a much easier way, especially on a breadboard. And I guess if you put extended headers in these pins here, you could use standard Uno shields on here as well. So all of these different boards have different features on. Sometimes I'll use one over another because it's got a certain feature. Um, but then the other day I came across these on eBay. And this is a, well, almost a standard perf board. But it's been created in the same size as an Arduino. The idea is it's a, you can build your own Arduino shield. Let me show you. So you'd plug it on there. And then you could make your circuit on top of here. But I was wondering whether I could actually make my own Arduino Uno. And as you saw before, I have a 328P, the crystal and the, and the capacitors and all the other components. And I was wondering whether there was any chance I could actually make my own Uno. So here's the plan, or should I say this is roughly the plan. But it looks pretty easy on paper. Well, apart from this mess up here. But I'm going to give it a go. I've got all the bits. Wish me luck. Well, it's a fairly slow process and a few adjustments have had to be made. But it's taking shape. Uh, you won't want to watch me doing the whole thing. Because so far I've spent about three quarters an hour on it. So, what, another half an hour, 40 minutes spent on this. It's going alright. Um, I've had to make a few adjustments, it's not working out um, on the circuit board quite as well as on the paper, but uh, I think I'm doing a reasonable job. Now on my uh, version I've built in a resistor here on digital pin 13, so digital pin 13 goes via this resistor from the chip back to the pin out on the board there, and it can also ground through this LED to have an onboard LED on my homemade Arduino. But if we look at the schematic here, um, digital pin 13, it's never shown is this LED. So I don't know whether I've got this quite right, but I suspect it will work. It will just bring the voltage down a little bit on pin 13 if I'm using that for something. Now I'm trying to think about power here. I have the 7805 uh, voltage regulator already soldered in. Um, but I was also thinking about 3.3 volts. Now I bought these little modules a while ago. It's got an, well this is a HK1117 uh, 3.3 um, voltage regulator on it. Um, whether you can see that or not. No, let me get my magnifying glass. So there we have the input and output capacitors, the three pins for voltage in, out and ground. There's a diode on there and a, and a resistor, 102. On the other side is just the uh, 7111 voltage regulator, 3.3 volts. So this should be able to supply up to an amp of 3.3 volts. The only thing I'm worried about is that these power components that I'm having to use and this 3.3 regulator in particular they protrude quite high and I think it might be higher than my headers when I fit them and yes it does look like it might be which might cause problems with some shields so I wonder if I can bend those pins over 
Well, yes, with a bit of manipulation, I can bend those over, and that should give me a much lower profile. There we go. Excellent. Well, I think I've pretty much completed it. Everything's not quite in the same place. There's a few obvious things, like the power connectors down here rather than in this section. Um, this voltage regulator is slightly different from where I planned it, and therefore the power LED and the digital pin 13 LED are in slightly different positions. I knew right from the start that I was never going to get USB on this board. So I've put in a 6-pin header here. The idea there is you can plug in a standard FTDI um, adapter, USB adapter. OK, here goes nothing. Well, it's powered up. Hmm. Now, has this chip got the bootloader installed? Okay, second time lucky. Excellent. A double flash. Now, what I found there is this chip I bought doesn't have the bootloader. I borrowed this one from that Arduino we saw earlier. So, admittedly, it's not the prettiest Arduino Uno in the world, but it's all mine, isn't it? I built it from scratch. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. Obviously, it hasn't got the USB on board, but we can soon plug an FTDI adapter in here. I've not populated the ISP header, although that just uses uh, 5 volts on ground and then pins 10, 11, 12 and 13. So we can soon plug in an ISP programmer if we needed to. I think I'll use those rubber feet from the original uh, genuine Arduino Uno I bought, if you remember, that came with this. I'll use that those on the bottom of this to protect those wires. And much like the other original, I think I'll stick my own sticker on this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the Arduino Uno. If you can, please give me a thumbs up. Comment, like and share and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.